So we just computed the MLE for linear regression. And I want to briefly, so, so we did it in this, the special case where we were considering, um, you know, the just the identity. You know, we weren't thinking about a basis function. So way, way back up here, we were using this sort of model, and we weren't using any basis functions. So this is really, it's not only linear in W, which is the linear part of linear regression, it's also linear in the X's. And if you, um, so I mentioned in another video that um, you can model nonlinearities with linear regression, nonlinearities in the X's, by using basis functions. And I want to just, you know, um, make explicit how that works here, just to, to let you know what it looks like. So remember, when we were using basis functions, we had uh, we were considering functions of the form w transpose phi of x, where phi this this phi here was a function from R d from x's to R m. I think I said m for some integer m. And um, and we observed that by making like a, a little change of variable, essentially, you know, let z equal phi of x, then this is just, of course, w transpose z, and you can do all of this same stuff, just replacing. So all the, this whole argument that I did above, everything goes through with with z if you just replace all the x's by by z's. And um, so in that case, what what everything looks like, so let's, so this was our solution to the MLE, and the, so the y's are unaffected in when we use basis functions, but the a's, remember the a's have x's, there's x's going on in the a's. Where's a? Uh, oh, there's a. Alright, so this was a. This was our, this design matrix thing. It was x1 transpose, blah, 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 xn transpose. And this is going to become, so phi of x i transpose is going to replace these rows. So back down here. So the design matrix in this, when we're using basis functions, let's write it a different letter. Let's write so sometimes people put like a capital Phi for the matrix Phi X1 transpose so that's the first row down to Phi of X N transpose so it's just you know it's just Z Z1 transpose to Z and transpose. That's all. And um, and then right. And so this is now it's n by m. So the dimension here could be changing. And by you know according to the comment, as I observed, you know we we can just replace the x's by z's. So this a the a matrix just gets replaced by the phi matrix, and that's our new design matrix. So this solution here, A transpose A inverse times A transpose Y. So the solution for this type of, you know, if we're assuming a linear regression model um, using these basis functions, then it would be, we have to choose, you know, the basis function that we're going to use. But then it would just be this thing, phi transpose phi inverse phi transpose y. Or easier to write, it's the pseudo inverse. pseudo inverse of phi times y. 
and that's it. I mean, that's the only everything else, all the argument above, everything goes through just fine, and um, and so and this is how you can model nonlinearities in the the axis. So I should mention I, I made this assumption, and I, I guess I didn't point it out at the end. We were assuming here that uh, the columns of A are linearly independent. So I should have mentioned here this is assuming columns of A are linearly independent. And the same thing down here. So that's the MLE in that case. Columns of phi are linearly independent. Okay, so that's the MLE. We got it.